But let's jump into yeah. waiver wired because that is the most important thing really at the middle of the week point here. And we'll start with the wide receivers. And listen, I wish we were doing the show during Cinco de Mayo here at the happy hour. I just feel like I we mean, should we should blow that out. It's not impossible. Yeah. Right producer, after the draft. Yeah. Producer Pete, make a note of that. Big Cinco de Mayo <laughs> yeah. uh, Lock celebration it in. here at the happy hour. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. All right. Lock it in. Yeah. Be here with us for Cinco de Mayo yeah. special on Peacock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The notable wide receivers on the bye in week seven. There's it's gonna brutal. be a this theme is of the show. It's by Mageddon. The theme of the show is going to be how the hell do you feel the roster this week? Well, we're here to help you. Uh, obviously loaded at wide receiver. The Panthers aren't a buy. Adam Thielen with the Bengals, Chase Higgins and Boyd, Dallas, CeeDee Lamb, Houston, Nico Collins, Tank Dell, with the Jets, Garrett Wilson, and with the Titans, DeAndre Hopkins. So Barry just a laundry list of names at the wide receiver position that are not playing this week. Yeah, 100 percent. And by the way, that's, uh, you know, we think Debo might play, but he may not. Like there's a couple of guys that are also sort of banged up. You know, we're expecting Deontay Johnson back this week, but we don't know for sure. You know, Christian Watson's been in out of the out of the lineup. He comes back this week. We you know, we, we saw him last week, but you never know. Like right. it just. There's a, uh, this is a tough week uh, for a lot of positions, but wide receiver uh, especially as well. So we've got some names for you. We've got some names for you. So we've got some hot little names let's right jump, here. Let's jump into the hot little names yeah. with the first one being exactly. Chiefs wide receiver Rasheed Olay. Rice. Pequeños <laughs> 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 nombres. Yeah. Exactly. There you oh go. boy. Look at you. You're further it's down the road than I am. It's going to be a long day. Yes. <laughs> yes. Jay, the first name we have here, Rasheed Rice. Somehow uh, we yell to pick up Rasheed Rice every week, and he's still available in over half of leagues, 55%. The Chiefs have the Chargers, Broncos, Miami, and Germany, and then the bye week. So Rasheed Rice, good call by you last week. You liked his receiving prop. He doubles it, essentially. He's starting to get – um, touches in this offense. Not a ton, but enough to matter. Yeah, I like to celebrate my own victories. I think that one got a little bit lucky, though, because he only had four targets in that game, even though he went four for 72. So that was a little bit of a concern. I don't understand this offense and why they don't utilize him more. Every time he's out there, he looks like a monster. He's the 15th best wide receiver by PFF grade. He just looks the part, but it just hasn't happened yet. I would expect that that will scale up. And certainly, if there is one wide receiver on the Chiefs that you want, it's Rasheed Rice, and I don't think it's particularly close, man. I would agree with you. He's tied for the team lead in red zone targets this year, as we've talked about here. They've had the mini buy. They're coming off the Thursday night game as well with Taylor Swift in attendance. What I understand, I hear from sources that she also ha she has Rasheed Rice on her <laughs> fantasy team. So I'm hoping uh, that you know that message somehow gets uh, from her to Brittany to Patrick Mahomes. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is to your point, double-digit fantasy points in three of the past four games. Like, I, we've said this for a while. We've been saying this for a while. Rasheed Rice is coming. This is going to happen. He is going to be a thing this season. He's been usable the last couple of weeks as well, and now he gets a Chargers team that's traveling on a short week. Um, or, or not traveling. The game's in, uh, the game's in uh, Los Angeles, I believe, right? No, uh, it's, you know, in it's in Kansas City. Kansas City. Okay, they are. That's right. All right. So, yeah, they're, um, they're traveling on a short week, and this is a team that obviously just got lit up by C.D. Lamb. Should have been lit up by Michael Gallup. We're getting there, right? But uh, they allow the second most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers. So, yeah, Rasheed Rice, to me, is shouldn't be 55% available. We've been talking him up for weeks. Yeah, and Mahomes seems to just always eviscerate the charges. Uh, yes. He makes a habit of right. that. And as you noted, they didn't put up a great defensive showing. Last night, Dak could have had even more. And we'll get to that game, but missed Pollard on the touchdown at the end. And Rasheed Rice... His, he, he is so correlated as well with Patrick Mahomes' success. Right. Because I've got a lot of people who have bet on Patrick Mahomes' MVP uh, at my urging, who are a bit worried that oh, Mahomes' numbers don't look great. Like, his weapons are as good as last year, maybe even better because of Rasheed Rice. Exactly. Like, he's lost like Juju Smith-Schuster. Rice is better than Juju. Uh, the fact that, as well, Kadarius Tony should provide more upside, but I think Rasheed Rice will get better, and I think Mahomes will get better with him, and I think that starts this week. He just needs the opportunity. Rasheed Rice coming out of college in last year's draft, his two best traits were playing above the rim, great fit with Patrick Mahomes, and working off script when the play breaks down, coming back to the quarterback. He needs to be on the field as much as possible for those things to happen. So I, I'm with you. The big-time breakout is coming for Rasheed Rice. Another rookie that we're waiting on to really – and he had a good week six, but he hasn't had that great week yet is Jackson Smith and Jigba, the first-round pick for the Seahawks. Barry, he's, you know, he's available in over 50% of leagues here, so he's still out there. He has Arizona this week, so he could really help you out on a bye week if he's available. What was encouraging to me the most part is, again, it hasn't shown up in the box score yet. But there's two things we know, right? Again – very simple. 
Fantasy success comes from talent and opportunity. It's one of the reasons why we like Rasheed Rice. We know he's got talent, and he's been getting more and more opportunity. Same with Jackson Smith and Jigba, who I believe, Connor, you had as your number one yep. rated wide receiver yep. coming out of college this year. So we all like JSN talent-wise. Is he going to get the opportunity? Previously in the season, he really wasn't. He was playing significantly fewer snaps, running fewer routes than DK Metcalf or Tyler Lockett this past week. Not so much. You see it there on your screen. 72% snap percentage. He got the four for 48, five targets. All of those were season highs. So he's had five or more targets in four out of five games this year, but he ran more routes. He was on the field more. He was almost equal with DK Metcalf and Tyler Lock. It feels like it's now to the point where we all hoped it would be, which is sort of like they're all out there equally. And then ultimately, if they're all out there equally, we think JSN's talent will win out. I'm not saying he's better than Metcalf or Lockett. He's not, not at this stage of his career, but he's going to earn more than he certainly has. A breakout could, could, could certainly come, especially this week against a Cardinals defense that allows the seventh most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers. Yeah, I think as well, Connor, there's the perception that, you know, Pete Carroll likes to run the ball. Think back to those Russell Wilson days where it was just so often run, run, pass, run, run, pass. This is not that same offense at all. They're seventh in the league in passing rate over expected based on the situation and where the teams would normally run or pass. So this is a team that throws the ball. And the fact also is they don't really get much out of their tight ends. I think there should be room yeah. for JSN to be that third guy in the passing offense. There absolutely should be. And they're not, they have an offensive line that's trying to figure it out as well and if they can they get healthy with that group the pass game will get better the Bengals front ate alive that Seattle offensive line and if they could figure that part out it'll only help a guy like JSN our next one here Giants wide receiver Wandale Robinson he's got your commanders this week Barry 82 percent available across all leagues and here's the thing with Wandale Robinson he's been a feature of this offense that's trying to figure it out the last couple weeks I feel like all these guys, I feel like especially Rasheed Rice, especially Wondell Robinson, we've been we've we've mentioned JSN before as well, but like some of these guys we just we keep talking about. Like, you know, just like like Tajay Spears, like some of these other guys, like we talked about Puka Naku in the preseason. Like again, I don't understand why or Tank Dell in the preseason. Like I these guys are gonna become things. Like if you look at all the underlying data, right? So well, by the way, he was my my Barry's bet on football night in America and that cash to get I just, just a heads up. Bet the berries bet. You know, parlay is always dicey, but you know, always tougher to hit. Straight bet. But straight cash bet. Cash it in. Straight bet <laughs> from cash money this year. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that uh, he had a 26% target share last week. Uh, uh, you know, with the uh, with the eight targets as well. Three straight games now with five or more receptions. The fact of the matter is about Wondell Robinson is again, and I feel like I've said this multiple shows in multiple weeks, but it bears repeating because he's still out there in way too many leagues. Brian Dayball used a second round pick on him, him and Joe Shane. Like he's the only guy on this roster in that passing game, with the exception of Darren Waller, who they traded for, that the current coaching staff is invested in in the way that like, that's my guy, not anyone else that they, inher they inherited Darius Slayton. They inherited all the, uh, inherited Isaiah Hodgins. Like um, uh, they did draft Jalen Hyatt, you know, right. so like, but Wanda Robinson, somebody they used a second round pick on and just think about Brian Dayball's offense, who always targets the slot. That's a big part Cross, especially the crossing routes. It's one of the things that Daniel Jones does well. We hope to get Daniel Jones back this week as well. So I want to like, this is going to be a thing. Like it, it already started to be a thing against, you know, again, he had Tyrod Taylor who's playing the bills defense and he's still, you know, had a, had a pretty nice game there. That's really usable in PPR. I think it's only going to continue. Wando Robinson is going to be, I believe what the giants wanted Kadarius Tony to be which is like this slot guy with some big play ability and maybe they'll try to use some gadget stuff. I don't think he's as gadgety as Kadarius Tony. I mean, you can talk about this better it than is. I can, but Kentucky uh, like, used him that way. But Kentucky yeah, used him 100%. like that way, right? I mean, yeah. like, I don't know. I, I, I've Wando Robinson on every dynasty team I have. Yeah. What can I tell you? I'm all in. Ole. I, I think the upside for Wondale comes from the fact that Isaiah Hodgins played 18 snaps against the Bills. Sterling Shepard played one snap. Those guys are not part of the offense. Thought about this being a, a really, well, not loaded in terms of talent, but loaded in terms of just people in the yes. wide receiver room for the Giants. Those guys are getting phased out. And the fact as well that he played less snaps than Jalen Hyatt and Darius Slayton, I think that'll start trending towards Wondale. He's got upside. He can play more, and he's getting targeted when he's out there. I, again, that's the... Earning targets is a skill, and the fact that he was able to earn eight targets playing, to your point, less snaps than the other guys just tells you something. Yep. 
Another player in a similar mold, Jay, is Josh Downs, who he's only available now in 67% of leagues. That number is going to go down because what we've been saying for a couple of weeks now is when Downs, the rookie slot receiver, plays with Gardner Minshew, Minshew leans on him. He does. And the fact that it's going to be the Minshew show the rest of the season, it looks right. like, I think that bodes well for Downs. They're just going to pass the ball more. I mean, Minshew threw the ball over 50 times against the Jags. They couldn't get anything going in the run game either. So I think that they will be throwing. Now, this is a tough matchup against Cleveland. This is the best defense in the NFL at the moment. So not a great situation for Downs with Cleveland and then the Saints after that. It's another tough. tough defense. But then you get at Panthers. Then you get New England in Frankfurt. I think Josh Downs will be viable going forward, Matthew. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we can get more to this when we get into the waivers, but the fact of the matter is, is that uh, Jim Irsay said most likely Anthony Richardson is down is done for the year. If nothing else, whether Richardson comes back or not, it's going to be Gardner Minshew for quite some time. And to your point, he has a, he has a connection with uh, Josh Downs. 21% target share for Josh Downs so far with Minshew under center this season. At least 13 fantasy points in three of the four games. Like, not somebody we love in standard or um, even half-point PPR, but in PPR, very viable, 87% available. How about Curtis? Plays the Browns this week, which you don't yeah, that's love. A tough but one. that's But Josh Downs is going to be a thing this year in PPR. In yeah, 12 term payoff PPR league. For sure. How about Curtis Samuel on your commanders here, Barry? I mean, yeah. available in 66% of leagues. He's got the Giants this week. Sam Howell is getting plenty of dropbacks, so there's a lot of opportunity to throw in this offense. And with Samuel... He's been consistently involved, like so many pass catchers in this Washington offense have been under Eric Bieniemy, where they're spreading the ball around. Yeah, exactly. I mean, look, it's, it's weird. He's become a weird floor player. He's had at least 50 receiving yards in four out of six games this season, four straight games with at least one red zone target. So, like, there's, there's clearly usage there. He's had 17 fantasy points per game over the past three weeks, at least 14 points in all three games. It's been kind of like, you know, um, propped up by touchdowns and I gotta believe at some point Jahan Dotson gets going he's just too good but you see it there on your screen Curtis Samuel is kind of like a, a three-headed monster there for Washington and given how much they throw because of how bad the secondary is and and let's be honest Sam Howell's been good yeah. Sam Howell's been uh, better than expected by most except for me who always believed uh, Curtis Samuel is a viable guy, 66% available. Decent match. By the way, here's their sketch. They got the Giants this week and then home to Philadelphia. The slot is where you attack the Eagles. You so, can throw against yeah, them. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. You know, and then at New, e at New England, which, you know, is not in theory a great matchup, but, you know, New England hasn't Pretty been New England, right? Nice. Exactly. I mean, yeah. exactly. And then at Seattle, uh, Seahawks secondary doesn't scare you at all. So, decent matchup coming up for my commanders. Yeah, the thing with Samuel is that I mentioned how the Seahawks are seventh in pass rate over expected. The commanders are second. The only team that passes more than them over expected is uh, Kansas City, who have Patrick Mahomes. I think a lot of that is skewed by the fact that they passed about 50 times in a row against the Bears in that Thursday night game, just never ran the ball at all. But this is a passing offense. And Sam Howell, for all of his sins, of ta he took another five sacks on the yes. weekend. It's yes, just completely did. insane yeah. that that is happening. But... Dios mio! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. When I watch the games, that's what I say. When I watch, when I watch every time I take sacks. another sucks. I can, I can vouch yeah. for that. Yeah. Uh, the thing with that is, at least from a fantasy perspective, it means he's hanging in the play and he's throwing the ball a ton. And so he, he's not throwing the ball away because he refuses to throw the ball yeah, away. No, it's either completion or sack. Completion right, or sack. Right, right. So it helps guys like Curtis Samuel uh, in an offense that yeah is providing a lot of stats. A couple quick mentions here. Obviously, these are some deep targets. Lions wide receiver Josh Reynolds against the Ravens. He's available in 52% of leagues. Reynolds right. has had plenty of big weeks this year. Uh, yeah. Patriots wide receiver Kendrick Bourne against the Bills. Saints wide receiver Rashid Shahid against Jacksonville. 68% still surprised me with Shahid. He's had two or three pretty big weeks this year. Yeah, he's just not getting it. You know, yeah. the, the, the question with Shahid is just can the passing – they're dumping it up to Kamara quite a bit. Michael Thomas is still healthy. You know Olave's the guy. Derek Carr has been inconsistent this year. Shahid is just one of those guys that because he plays special teams, he doesn't play a full complement of snaps. Yep. But, like, when he's out there, the kid makes plays. Yep. Like, just really like the kid. It's worth noting. I mean, Kendrick Bourne, this is, again, he had quietly had a very nice game. Uh, we didn't really get to much in that Patriots Raiders game, but Hendrick Ford had a 35% target share this week. He actually leads the Patriots in targets, in receptions, in receiving yards. He had a couple good games at the start of the season. I know it's been brutal for the Patriots, and Mac Jones is under fire. But again, this week in Bimageddon, you may not be picky. 
Kendrick Bourne at least has big playability, and they're trying to get him the ball. Yeah, Josh Reynolds is an interesting one to me, just with the banged up running back situation for the Lions, going up against Baltimore, who have a top five rushing defense. Like, this quietly, we talked about how last night was a referendum on Dak Prescott. Mm. Not as much pressure because they're 5-1. and one. This is a massive game for Jared Goff because he mm -hmm. doesn't play outdoors much after this. He's only got one game exposed to the elements yep. after this one against Baltimore. It's going to be on his shoulders. Uh, and look, Jared Goff's been talked about as an MVP candidate. He, this game is all about him. And I think Josh Reynolds is yeah. playing so well that, that he's going to be viable. If he has, uh, we're going to do futures uh, uh, later in the show, but it's right. If Jared, it'd be interesting to see what the MVP odds are if Jared, if Jared Goff goes into Baltimore and, plays and, well out and wins. no outplays Lamar Jackson, yeah. right? And and they win, right? They go on the road and they win that because I think everyone likes the Lions, but yeah. they're just now starting to be talked about like, oh, oh, could it be the Lions instead of the Eagles out of the yeah. NFC? Which I I don't know why that's not a thing, but you know, obviously given the Eagles haven't looked like the Eagles in all capital letters so far, and the Lions have been crushing. Yeah, and the Lions as well. I mean, after at Baltimore, then the schedule's really easy after that. It's been Vegas, at Chargers, home Bears, home Packers, wow. at Bears. <laughs> like, it's well, insanely the easy. the a joke. Yeah. They, right. if they we talked about this when we were talking two. up Amon Ross St. Brown and Montgomery in the preseason, even, even, even Jameer Gibbs or Laporta to an extent, which is like seven of their final eight games are in a dome where golf plays well. And yeah. so I... It's, Just saying, it's, don't be shocked if Jared Goff is like plus 500 for MVP in a couple of weeks. I don't think he's ultimately going to win because he's Jared Goff. And people just have a barrier with Jared Goff when he MVP over Patrick right. Mahomes and Josh Allen, the right. same way they do with Purdy. So it's even worse for Goff because Purdy at least is more unknown. But sometimes if you're there, the I, I, I think it's a better chance that Dan Campbell wins coach yes, of the year than uh, because, you know, people love him and he's done a great job there and he's charismatic and, you know. Yeah. But yeah, he's very big. Yes, but I could see Jared Goff winning like an SB <laughs> yeah. or something. Uh, okay, yeah. What are the Nickelodeon ones called? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, like yeah. a yeah, Slime Time or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I could yeah, see him winning yeah. one of those. It does look suspiciously like Ryan Gosling as well. Yes. So he could be in line for uh, even an Oscar by accident. Uh, his, his, for Barbie? Yeah, <laughs> yeah for Barbie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and here's Jared Goff. <laughs> right. Except uh, <laughs> best supporting actor. Gosling like couldn't make it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right, to recap, Barry's Week 7 top wide receiver waiver targets Rasheed Rice at number one. If he's out there in your leagues, just go get him. We've been asking you to do that every week. Number two, Jackson Smith and Jigba for the Seahawks. Three, Wondell Robinson getting heavily involved in the Giants offense at number three. And four, Josh Downs. He's been really good with Gardner Minshew this year. Five, Curtis Samuel, who has been involved with Sam Howell in the commander's passing attack. All right, let's move over to running backs. And, of course, we'll start this showing you the notable buys for I'm week sorry. seven. Yeah. Did you say move over to running backs? Or do you mean vamos? Ah, <laughs> to running backs? yes. Well done. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and Rotorworld.com. And I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched. Or, if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay? I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own fantasy football happy hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.